In this exercise, we are going to verify Newton's second law. A pack S of mass 100 grams and of center of mass G may slide along an inclined track that makes an angle alpha with the horizontal with sine alpha equals 0 0.4. G moves along the x-axis parallel to the track as shown in figure 1. We release S without initial velocity at time 0. At the end of each time interval, tau, which is equal to 50 milliseconds, positions G0, G1, G2, G3, G4, and G5 of G are recorded at the instance T0, T1, T2, T3, T4, and T5, respectively. The values of the abscess X of G, where X equals G0, G are given in the table below. Take G equals 10 meters per second squared. Number one. Prove that the speed of the puck at the instance 2 toes and 4 toes are 0.4 meters per second and 0.8 meters per second respectively. Let's start with V2. V2 equals the distance between G1, G3 over the time interval between these two points. G1, G3 is not given in the above table, but G1, G3 can be written as G0, G3 minus G0, G1. G0, G3 equals 4.5 cm. G0, G1 equals 0.5 cm. So, G1, G3 equals 4.5 minus 0.5. We multiply these two numbers by 10 to the power minus 2 to convert into meter. And 2 tau equals 2 times 50 times 10 to the power minus 3 second. Then, V2 equals 0.4 meters per second. Similarly, V4 is the distance between G3, G5 over the time interval between them. G3, G5 can be written as G0, G5 minus G0, G3. G0, G5 equals 12.5 cm and G0, G3 equals 4.5 cm. So V4 equals 0.8 meters per second. Let's move to part 2a. Calculate the mechanical energy of the system puck earth at the instance T0, T2, and T4, knowing that the horizontal plane passing through G0 is taken as a reference level for gravitational potential energy. The mechanical energy is the sum of the kinetic energy and the gravitational potential energy of the system. Now, this figure shows the inclined track and the initial position of the G. The mechanical energy of G at time 0 equals Ke0 plus Gpe0, but the puck is released from rest, then the initial kinetic energy is 0, and in the position G0, the puck is at the reference level of gravitational potential energy, then Gpe0 equals 0, therefore, the mechanical energy at time 0 is equal to 0. Now, let's move to the mechanical energy at the instant T2. At the instant T2, the mechanical energy is 1 half mv2 squared plus mg z2. But where is z2? Look, this is the position G2, and this is z2, which is the altitude of G at this position. How can we calculate this altitude? Look at this right angle, the triangle. This angle is alpha. Now, sine alpha equals the absolute value of Z2 over G0, G2. Then the absolute value of Z2 is sine alpha times G0, G2. Therefore, Z2 equals minus G0, G2 sine alpha. This is because in the position G2, pack S is below the reference level, then the altitude must be negative. Now replace G0, G2 by 0 0.02 meters and sine alpha by 0 0.4, then Z2 equals minus 8 times 10 to the power minus 3 meters. Now we are ready to calculate the mechanical energy at the, the instant T2. Plugging in the numbers gives the value of this mechanical energy. It is equal to zero. Now, 
Let's determine the mechanical energy at the instance t4. mv4 equals one half mv4 squared plus mg z4. Look at the figure. z4 is given by minus g0 g4 sine alpha. G0 G4 equals 8 centimeters, which is equal to 0.08 meters, and sine alpha equals 0.4. Therefore, Z4 equals minus 32 times 10 to the power minus 3 meters. Now, replace M V4 G and Z4 by their values. We get the value of M E4, which is equal to 0. Focus, please. This is important. Let's move to part 2b. Why can we assume that the puck moves along the rail without friction? In part 2a, we have seen that Me0 equals Me at time t2 equals Me at time t4, which is equal to 0. Therefore, the mechanical energy of the system is conserved. Then, the puck moves without friction along the rail. Let's move to part 3. Determine the variation in the linear momentum delta P, which is equal to P4 minus P2 of S, during the time interval delta T, which is equal to T4 minus T2. Now, the variation in the linear momentum equals P4 minus P2. But what is P4? P4 equals MV4 and P2 equals MV2. Look at the figure. S moves in the positive x direction. Then V4 equals plus 0.8i and V2 equals plus 0.4i. Therefore, delta P equals 0.04i and it is expressed in SI units in kilograms meters per second. 4a. Name the forces acting on S during its motion. The external forces acting on S are its weight mg and the normal force n. 4b show that the net force acting on S is mg sine alpha i. The sum of these forces is mg plus n, but the net force along the y axis is zero since there is no motion along the y axis. So, we project these forces along the positive x-axis or along the direction of the motion of S. The projection of mg along the x-axis is mg sin alpha, and n is normal to the x-axis, so the projection of n along the x-axis is zero. Therefore, projecting these forces along the x-axis gives mg sin alpha plus zero, which is equal to mg sin alpha. Therefore, the net force vector acting on S is given by mg sine alpha i. Let's move to part 5. Assuming that delta t is very small, delta p over delta t may be considered equal to dp by dt. Show that Newton's second law is verified between the instance t2 and t4. This is a Newton's second law. Now, in order to verify Newton's second law, we need to compare the values of the net force acting on the system and delta P over delta T. Let's start with delta P over delta T. Delta T equals T4 minus T2. T4 minus T2 equals 2 tau. We have calculated delta P in part 3, and tau is given. Then, let's calculate delta P over delta T. It is equal to 0.4i. Now, let's calculate the value of the net force acting on the system. In the previous slide, we have seen that the net force equals mg sine alpha i. Replace mg and sine alpha by their values. Then, the net force equals 0.4i and it is expressed in newtons. Now, let's compare delta P over delta T with the net force acting on the system. They are equal. Then, Newton's second law is verified.